Gatekeeping. For years, the word has had such a negative connotation, but recent events in social, political, creative, and entertainment spaces have given the term a resurgence. But this time, there's a push to bring it back to the forefront. Not necessarily to alienate, but to protect the integrity of communities, subcultures, and interests. And today, we're gonna talk about it. Learn some business and spin it using what we do best, fashion and culture. I'm Reggie Casual, let's get it. So, I'm gonna be real. I got this inclination to do this, watching the whole Drake-Kendrick feud play out. Now, I kept my mouth shut because like any good analyst, me calling myself a good analyst, uh, I was just watching people react, sometimes in the most ridiculous of ways. It was admittedly entertaining, but also revealing. Kendrick, no matter if you are a fan or not, gave a voice to the pro gatekeeper crowd. To these individuals, his rival, that being Drake, is the epitome of mainstream manufactured corporate deculturalism. To be clear, I'm not calling him that. It's simply a clear observation. I have no dog in that fight except as an analyst. Take that beef talk somewhere else. We're here for the business of it all. Now, let us continue. As I parsed through comments about Drake and Kendrick, it became clear to me that this wasn't just a beef, but a growing conversation in multiple forms about the nature of gatekeeping and mainstreaming. In the industry I work in, fashion, I noticed the obvious parallels. As Paris Fashion Week 2024 comes to a close at the time of this, uh, there was a certain smell in the air that a major sea change was coming, with Prada going back to basics, Y3 going back to what makes it special, and Rick blowing our minds. And yes, we will get to that shortly. If we were to compare this phenomenon with the Kendrick and Drake feud, it would be something like this. And again, I'm taking no sides. Rick Owens, for example, is a mainstream designer, but his collections are anything but mainstream. They're incredibly specific in design and style, it's hard to pull off, and there is a certain authenticity to it that cannot be replicated. Further, his most purest fans are deeply invested in ensuring Rick is never viewed as regular mainstream. Sure, Rick can make a diffusion label to make it more appealing to a more expansive audience, but even in those instances, it requires a level of conversion by the consumer to adopt that aesthetic. LV, on the other hand, celebrates its legacy. Growth and consistency are its endearing qualities. It's made for an expansive clientele. Its primary function is to sell as many garments as possible. As a result, the brand constantly evolves itself to stay competitive and relevant. It can never be behind the times. It must co-op cores or trends to establish its dominance. While this approach may seem less authentic, the strategy has led it to being the most popular luxury label in the world. Now, does that sound familiar to you? Of course it does. Both of these methods obviously are valid in growth and potential, one more so than the other. However, let's pretend that something crazy happened in fashion. Let's pretend, perchance, that Rick Owens one day decided he was gonna rail on mainstream fashion. In fact, he kinda did this in his own little way, just with his latest collection, co-opting a togetherness and being different approach that has so many layers, both in meaning and construction, that dissecting it here would be grossly inappropriate, but I digress. But suppose Rick decided to do this even more directly. Suppose he just distinctly pointed out Louis Vuitton as being the reason why fashion is becoming a boring mess due to its mainstream approach. Do you know the shit storm that would ensue if that was the case? Fans of Rick would applaud Rick for his bravery. LV fans would be quick to point out that none of Rick's collections have ever sold as well as an LV collection. Rick fans' rebuttal will almost certainly be, it ain't about sales, but impact. LV fans' counter rebuttal will likely be, Rick does the same shit as LV. He's just trying to make money too. Just because he's unique doesn't mean the collections are good. In fact, who actually wears that stuff? Rick fans will likely point out how LV co-ops cultures and movements to suit its monetary goals, that it's not real fashion, and is part of the reason of the downward trajectory of the industry, perhaps the primary reason. And LV fans will certainly shame Rick fans by saying something to the effect of, just because LV is light skip, I mean, just because LV is easier to adopt and flexible, it ain't real fashion? Now, there is a lot more to say on that front and a lot more to cover, but before we get deep into those weeds, let's get in a word from our sponsor, Squarespace, so I can get away from that entire comment thread that I, that I just did. Yeah, just, just 
Check this out real quick. A big part of fashion is community and building a fashion brand or any business requires a strong one. That's why using Squarespace for your new website might be the way to go. Besides being packed with great website templates, built-in SEO and analytics, Squarespace's new members areas make it easy to create, foster, and grow a community of true fans. Give back by giving members exclusive content, discounts, and much more all while monetizing your business. So use our code squarespace.com slash the casual to save 10% off of your first website and let Squarespace help you build your brand, business, and community. Okay, so it may seem like this is some twisted way to shoehorn a rap beef with fashion for views. Some of you might even be thinking that, like, bro, it's not that deep and it's a reach, bruh, and we know why you did this. Certainly, probably, maybe, but honestly, from an analytical point of view, it is kind of deep because a direct form of this is actually happening in many fashion circles. Why? Because luxury's low sales, historic drops in relevance of brands, unfulfilled projections, fallout, and retirements in fashion have never been so dense than at this moment. And much of it is due to a result of the let's say, hyper-mainstreaming going on, not only in fashion, but in other industries and social spaces. As a result, more and more people are realizing that they no longer feel a part of something unique and special. And as a result of that, gatekeeping, something we viewed as a net negative in the recent past, has become more of a topic of discussion. And those in the pro-gatekeep camp are now screaming that we need to kinda bring it back, like back it up. To be clear, gatekeeping was prominently used negatively because it places a barrier in front of people who wanna get in on something and people who have already subscribed to it will not let it happen. But there's a reason for this. Gatekeepers know all too well what usually happens when the masses get a hold of something unique. That thing effing changes into something more palatable for the masses and less for them. And it's gotten so ridiculous that across various media and creative sectors, there's a growing pushback by certain consumers to take back personal interests and redefine them based on the lost principles that eroded during the expansion of social media. And it's even easier to stand up when another notable person within the interest that you are trying to protect points that out. But let me be perfectly clear here. It's okay for the mainstream to exist, Drake, LV, whatever the hell you wanna call it. Nobody here is calling for their irrelevance, but the current climate certainly points to a resurgence of individual interests being protected and ensuring that they remain protected from complete mainstreaming. I mean, just look at what happened to the sneaker industry. It is basically in shambles because Nike wanted to make stuff for everybody and Adidas wanted to make stuff for everybody. And now these other brands and independent creators encroached so much on their sales that say like Nike decided to sue everybody under the sun that even remotely did a design that was as close to anything that Nike has ever made as possible. And it's actually kind of crazy. As far as myself is concerned, there was a time in my life that I believed that letting everybody know as much as possible was the most important thing. But a lot of the time that information is misused and unfortunately abused. And when that information is abused, it kind of ruins it for everybody. So in that instance, it's kind of like, yeah, you don't want to treat things like a zoo or a playground where it's not even respected. And in that capacity, I am kind of pro gatekeeping. You can't let everybody into the cookout lest the cookout becomes far too big. And by the time you get something on your plate, it's just watered down hogwash. But that doesn't mean that I'm not gonna show you stuff that I think warrants to be seen. That doesn't mean that, but I'm going to be very cautious about it. Cautious. So again, yes, I do want people to know stuff and I do want people to be involved, but it would be very appreciative if people knew what they were getting into rather than just adopting things wholesale because it's cool at the moment. But this insight is only one. Let us know your thoughts on gatekeeping in the comments. Is it coming back? Or are you pushing for more openness and transparency? Let it all be known and let me know what you think. Keep it civil, but let me know what you think. Also, there are business implications of this, as I've mentioned, that can be utilized, like understanding niche targeting and market segmenting. But we'll leave that lesson to our members on Patreon and YouTube. 
However, if you want to learn about that kind of stuff, join us there. It helps us out a ton with your support and gets you some good extras in the process. At the very least, drop a sub if you haven't already, drop a like, and turn on notifications. But most importantly, keep it locked right here for all of your info in international fashion culture and business from Tokyo. It's your boy, and keep it casual. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. And I will see you guys in a minute.